In part one, I uncovered the mystery behind AMD's claim of 50% performance per watt and showed power scaling. In part two, I showed how the RDNA 3 architecture, when run at the same clock speeds as RDNA 2, only provides a few percent improvement. Is this AMD Radeon's bulldozer moment? What are the short-term and long-term implications to AMD Radeon? And is RDNA 3 something you should avoid? Let's get into it. I have been using the RX 7600 and 6600 XT GPUs for more than a month, doing back-to-back -back comparisons. If you haven't watched the first two parts, I highly recommend you watch those first, links above and below. You can even click on the playlist to make it easier. These earlier parts provide the backstory and will give you a good understanding of the methodology, the data, and conclusions for which this video is based upon. As we saw previously in Gaming Benchmarks, RDNA 3 as an architecture, on average, only provides a few percent improvement in performance over RDNA 2, and that is both for rasterization performance and ray tracing performance. And this is while NVIDIA improved the RTX 40 series this generation. We saw the 4070 with the same number of shaders as the 3070 provide a 30% improvement in performance in both rasterization and ray tracing. RDNA 3 did not keep pace with NVIDIA. Since 2019, AMD has been building the RDNA architecture to be competitive with NVIDIA. RDNA 1 in the RX 5700 XT was competitive with the RTX 2070. And because RDNA 1 was so good, it forced NVIDIA to release the Super Refresh. And I contend the Super Refresh never would have happened without RDNA 1. And then, a little over a year later, RDNA 2 in the 6800 XT was competitive with the RTX 3080. And the third generation of RDNA was the one that everyone was hoping was going to overtake NVIDIA. The development of RDNA and the gains seen each generation was starting to parallel what AMD Ryzen's development did on the CPU side. It took Ryzen three generations to dethrone Intel, and they did so with the release of Zen 3 back in November of 2020. One of Ryzen's key features was the use of chiplets, and RDNA 3 was going to use chiplets. The anticipation has been building so much that some were calling RDNA 3 AMD Radeon's Zen moment, and others called it AMD Radeon's Ryzen moment. But as we saw with the data in my last two videos, instead the RDNA 3 architecture effectively stagnated and is only a couple percent better than the one it replaces. And now AMD is hoping that nobody notices the disaster that is RDNA 3. Yes, I did say disaster. When your new product that you spent two years on is not that much faster than your old one, while your competitor jumps forward, it's a disaster. There is only one other time I was this disappointed in a launch, and that one is eerily similar to this one. The last time I was this disappointed was with the launch of AMD's Bulldozer CPU. For those who don't know, Bulldozer was AMD's CPU architecture that launched back in 2011 as part of their new FX series. Bulldozer was an all-new CPU architecture that was going to challenge Intel. It was hyped and delayed for years, and when it finally launched, it was a disappointment. As the flagship Bulldozer CPU could not compete with Intel's high-end i7 CPU and could only compete with Intel's mid-range i5. Even the comparisons to AMD's previous generation CPU in Phenom was very disappointing. I know, I had a Phenom. I was looking forward to that upgrade. And that's where the launch of RDNA 3 GPU is hauntingly similar to the launch of AMD's Bulldozer CPU. Could this be AMD Radeon's Bulldozer moment? Let's look at the similarities. The highest-end RDNA 3 GPU in the 7900 XTX cannot compete with NVIDIA's high-end and it has to compete with one tier lower, just like Bulldozer. The RDNA 3 architecture does not provide a significant improvement over RDNA 2, just like Bulldozer did not provide a significant improvement over Phenom. RDNA 3 was supposed to have higher clock speeds, just like Bulldozer was supposed to achieve higher clock speeds. It took Bulldozer two years to get to 5 GHz with the FX9590. RDNA 3 is coming against a new generation from NVIDIA in the RTX 40 series that did make a jump in performance. Just like Bulldozer came up against Intel's Sandy Bridge architecture that also provided a jump in performance. 
Finally, RDNA 3 has earned a reputation for consuming more power, just like Bulldozer was known for consuming a lot of power. And based on all those similarities, RDNA 3 is AMD Radeon's Bulldozer moment. These similarities have me concerned since Bulldozer set AMD back for years. It wasn't until the next major re-architecture in Ryzen, six years later in 2017, that AMD again became competitive at the high end. And recent rumors say RDNA 4 will not be offered on the high end and they have canceled work on Navi 41 and 42. The sad reality is AMD Radeon's RDNA 3 architecture only provided a few percent better performance. If NVIDIA had priced their GPUs properly and fairly this generation, like I discussed in this video, link above, nobody would purchase an AMD Radeon GPU, and Radeon on the desktop would be DOA. But for all the hopeful out there, there's always RDNA 4 or 5. There are several implications of this disaster for AMD Radeon. In the near term, the implication of AMD being effectively stagnant this generation is that they also opened the door for Intel. I did a video where I discussed how AMD Radeon market share in the discrete GPU market is at its lowest level ever. And more recent data confirms that this is not just one bad quarter. In fact, this chart from Tom's Hardware is showing that Intel is now steadily at about 4% market share while AMD is at 12%. AMD is losing market share and is at its lowest level ever. And yes, Nvidia is firmly a monopoly with over 80% market share. Intel's next generation of GPUs based on Battlemage is scheduled to come out in 2024. If AMD takes two years to release replacements for this generation, it could open the door for Intel to take even more market share away from AMD. That's what happens when you stand still. Everybody is either moving further ahead of you or catching up to you. In the long term, just to catch Nvidia by next generation in their RTX 50 series, AMD Radeon RDNA 4 architecture will have to have a massive improvement of 60% or more, and again, that's just to catch up. And now we're into 2025. To really challenge or pass NVIDIA, they would need to have another massive improvement with RDNA 5, which would take us into 2027. And that requires AMD Radeon to deliver back-to-back -back massive wins. When has AMD Radeon ever done that before? And if it doesn't happen, then AMD is going to be in a battle with Intel for market share in desktop GPUs. Finally, is RDNA 3 something you should avoid? My experience with the 7600 has been a positive one. It has worked great, no driver issues, plays games at 1080p Ultra just fine, but I'm not into ray tracing for this class of cards, so the fact that it is well behind a 3060 doesn't bother me. It's a 1080p GPU. It's rather unremarkable and not that different from a 6650 XT. For me, it's not a bad GPU or something you need to avoid, but the MSRP price is too high. But I only paid 219 for it open box, and I also got Resident Evil 4 for free. So from a value perspective, I think I got a pretty good deal for a 1080p GPU. Besides, what other GPU from this generation could I get for that price? If you want better value, you're better off picking up a 6650 for less, or a 6700 for just a little more. Or if you're like me and you're not afraid to buy used, pick up a secondhand 6600 XT, undervolt and overclock it to get 6650 XT-like performance for almost half the price of a 7600. And if you prefer an NVIDIA GPU with similar performance, you could also pick up a used RTX 2070 Super, 2080, or 2080 Super for under $200. The market data shows this level of performance in a GPU is around $200 or less. And that's why at $269, this is disappointing. AMD can't charge the same price for the same performance level as last generation. That's not progress. If AMD can't provide a generational performance benefit, then they need to provide a generational cost benefit. And that would only happen if it was priced at $239 or below. By the way, if you like this type of analysis and insight and would like to see more, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you think RDNA 3 is a major setback and if you think AMD Radeon will ever be able to overtake NVIDIA this decade. You can now get the 7600 reference GPU from the AMD store. It took them almost two months, but they finally fixed the backplate issue. And it comes with the standard edition of Starfield as well, which, if you intend to buy Starfield anyways, effectively makes this a $200 GPU. Just don't expect the legendary experience. 
For a price in the low $200 range, the 7600 could become this generation's RX 580-like entry-level king. After all, Nvidia has abandoned the entry-level market. You know, I wonder if this old RX 580 will even be able to play Starfield. Could it even provide an exploratory experience for those who just want to see what all the excitement is about and look around? That is a question for another day. This deeper look at RDNA 3 in comparison to RDNA 2 has primarily shown AMD Radeon stagnation while also exhibiting some different behaviors, especially with certain games at certain settings. For example, in Part 2, the 7600 showed the potential for higher performance like in Time Spy and Port Royal benchmarks, and also in Red Dead 2 and Cyberpunk. Those benchmarks and games are rather demanding. Is it possible RDNA 3 will provide better performance in the future with more demanding games? Remember, as bad as Bulldozer was when it launched, it did age better than Phenom. Maybe RDNA 3 will age better than RDNA 2. That's something I'll continue to explore and keep you updated. With the impending release of the RX 7700 and 7800, I am seeing more deals on the 7900 XT GPUs. Yes, you will see upcoming videos on this GPU. I do want to understand performance of RDNA 3 with chiplets. And could this GPU be the GPU to get for entry-level 4K performance, and could it rival an RTX 4080? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.